OK, everybody, um, we are well into day th three. Uh, we are, of course, um, talking about aligning and operating the cognitive, emotional and physical aspects of the self really to become the embodiment of the new us, the highest version of us. Um, and that's what leads us to total freedom and fulfillment. And it's such a pleasure, such an honor uh, for me to introduce a uh, dear brother, uh, Jeremy Hoffman. He's a serial impact entrepreneur, and he can tell us what uh, what that actually is. Um, and he's he's going to be talking today about, you know, how to go from the victim to the victor in your life. So Jeremy, brother, uh, such an honor always uh, to, to uh, be able to connect with you, speak with you. Um, I'm such a such a fan of yours, and and uh, we've been friends for a long time. So thank you so much for doing this, and uh, welcome to uh, Unleash Yourself Day Three. Woo! Let's go. Yeah, thanks, Lee, and you know, echoing that, I've, I've, I'm a huge fan. I've learned so much from you, and so grateful for how you continue to show up in my life. And so thank you for having me, and I'm, I'm grateful to to be here to share and to to help support in the remembrance of every other human on this planet or anyone who's listening to this in this moment to be able to unlock who they really are and truly unleash themselves. Uh, just to speak to that first point, Lee, yeah, a, a serial impact entrepreneur. Serial is someone who's building or has built multiple things. So an entrepreneur who isn't just, you know, focused on building one company and then exiting it. They really are in, impacting or co-creating multiple different projects. The impact side is really having a focus on impact and then profit, understanding we need profit in order to move the business forward. But impact and people are at the forefront of the products, the models, the services that we cultivate. And then entrepreneurship is to me, when someone is willing to invest their life force, their resources to truly innovate inside of a space. So that's essentially what we're doing. And what I love to continue to cultivate multiple impactful businesses that I believe are innovating and making a difference in the world. Mm. So beautiful and, and so well, so, so well needed. Um, definitely at this time. So thanks for all you're doing, man. Um, and, you know, you're going to talk today uh, about going from victim to victor. And, um, you know, we've, we've been talking for the last two days about, really opening to new possibilities, perspectives to, to actually, you know, that we can create a new identity for ourselves. And then, you know, moving into day two is activating and optimizing kind of the mind, body, spirit aspects of, of who we are through disciplined practice, you know, implementing the breath works and the healthy eating and the meditations and the mindsets and, you know, all of that sort of thing. You know, now we're, we're really focused on how to how to operate in you know that that or embody that highest version of us um and so you know going from victim to victor it, it may sound like a like a like an easy thing to do but um you know i i think it's it's something that is there's a lot more work involved in it um that that people don't realize and and um you mentioned earlier on a previous call about you know showing up for yourself and i would imagine that 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 has a lot to do with with this journey from victim to victor 100 percent. now when we say victim to victor and you alluded to it in saying that it's there's more work than meets the eye right because it sound in theory it's like oh yeah like i want to be the victor of my life like i don't want to be the victim anymore i want to take my power back i want to unleash who i truly am and show up and hit my potential as I see other people through my social media, they're like, they're doing this and they're doing that. And, you know, God forbid you go on TikTok and your algorithms are showing you that you could be a millionaire in like five minutes. And I mean, maybe some of you can, if you do, please let me know how you did it. Um, <laughs> but that's usually not the case. And when we, when we go from victim to victor, the hardest part is we've grown up in an environment where we are so adapt to blaming other people or making excuses for why certain things aren't happening and I believe a lot of this you know we learn as we're kids it's based on how our parents are operating it's based on how our family whatever we are you know 
environmentally, you know, around when we're young and as we grow up, we, you know, we take on, we can, we consume that. It, it begins to create part of our story. And if you look around in the world, radical responsibility where everything is always your fault without blaming or shaming yourself is very rare and very challenging to do because it is significantly easier to either make an excuse or to blame someone else. And what I want to make sure is very clearly understood is where you can go on the, you know, the further side of the, you know, radical responsibility, radical responsibility or victim mindset is when you begin to blame and shame yourself, the victor does not blame or shame himself um, when you know something is happening. They they still they take responsibility and they move forward with the solution. But that's the key part: is are you willing to understand that your life is actually in your control? And the minute that you come up with an excuse, well, I need to have this job because I have X or I need to stay in this relationship because I have X, or I can't do this because of whatever it may be. I understand that certain things may take time and certain life decisions may take, you know, planning and being thought through. But ultimately the choice to be victorious in your life is up to you 100%. And again, you can, eat the right foods, you can do the right yoga, you can do the right breathing, you can do the right, you know, meditations, the right ceremonies, the right plant medicines, the right psychedelics. But if you are not becoming the victor of your life, moment by moment, day to day, and you are catching yourself, blaming yourself, blaming others, making excuses why you can't move in the direction, why you can't be healthier, why you can't be happier, why you can't accept something that's happened in the past, then you're still playing victim. And I like to say when we're playing victim, we're trapping ourselves inside of the prison of our own minds. Mm. So, so powerful. And, you know, we, we've been discussing this idea of, of peak performance as well for the last three days and, and really, you know, becoming a, a peak performer, not just in one or two areas of your life, but actually in every aspect of your life with your health, with your relationships, the money that you make, you know, bringing fulfillment into your life through, you know, living your purpose and, and what you're actually birthing into the world. How would you relate that to, to being the victor in your life? The, the victor in your life co coincides with this mantra that life is happening for you, not to you, right? And so when you realize that life is happening for you, not to you, you realize that you are the victor of every single thing that's happening. And so when we speak about peak performance, whether this is in, you know, you know, fitness, let's say that you're, you haven't hit your new personal best, or you have an injury, something along these lines, all of the, you have some kind of setback or some delay that happens. All of that is still happening for you in, in that moment. Someone that is super into the fitness side of things, they can be, you can be really hard on yourself when you don't achieve or when you don't hit a goal or when you have some kind of setback. And so again, it's not that we become soft and we go, oh, well, it's okay that it happened. That, that's not necessarily the victor either. It's going, okay, this has happened for a reason. Now, am I willing to explore why this has happened? Has my performance training been detrimental on my physical body? Is my, did my knee blow out? Did, did I rip my pec because I just was pushing it too far? You're just getting live time data from the world, from the universe to help you become better as you continue to develop who you really are. The same is true for your career. When we talk about career performance, now, every single thing that's going to happen in your business or entrepreneurial journey is happening for a reason. And it's up to you to determine what that meaning is and to be the victor as you know, projects fall through as projects skyrocket, as, you know, investment comes or investment doesn't come as your ad accounts get shut down, as your newsletter doesn't go out at the right time, like all of these different things are happening for you to continually refine how you can show up your best. So I, I would actually insert the victim to victor and that victor consciousness, the victor mindset into performance at every single level, because 
playing the victor, whether you're at the gym and someone takes the bench that you wanted to, or you're in a business and someone screws you over or whatever it may be, all of those moments are crucial in your development and growth. So can you go into the, the difference in mindset? Between which? Between, between a victim and a, and a victor, you know, like, yeah. like a, a victor would, you know, and just maybe we'll pick a situation, right? And, and what would be the differences in, in how the victim or the victor would actually perceive yeah. that, that situation? Yeah, let, let's, take, um, let's take a breakup. Either a, we can, you, you can choose, Lee, either a breakup or uh, being fired from a job. Which do you, which, which journey do you want to explore? I mean, I, I think they're, they're both probably relevant to our audience. Um, Perfect. Let's, let's go, <laughs> let's go with the job right now. Okay, sweet. So let's say you've been working a job, you've been mediocre, you've been happy, but not fully satisfied. It's been paying the bills. And over the course of time, you're just starting to build up resentment in this job, but you have a wife you have a family or are a partner, uh, you have a family, you might have a mortgage or rent. Of course, we know the cost of living is very expensive, it's definitely here in, in North America. And so there's this obligation that you really need to keep this job. You know, it does, it checks most of the boxes, but you're not waking up in the morning and being like, yeah, you know, I'm inspired to go to work. And not that you should be inspired every single day, but you get the point. This is a lot of people, right? If you're in the percentage of people who actually enjoys going to work most of the time, you're, you're, you're in a small demographic. Um, if you're in a job place right now where you're not experiencing fatigue or burnout, you're in the 25th percentile because 75% of people are experiencing burnout and stress at their current jobs. Now, you get fired. You get let go. And of course, there's the normal emotions that we need to process around grief, Maybe there's some fear that comes up. All of these are normal responses to this situation and not to be bypassed. It's okay to feel the grief. You maybe feel slightly abandoned. That's okay. Betrayed. That's okay. It's okay to feel these things. But as you move through your, your, your process of these emotions that are, again, very normal and very human to feel, you start to blame yourself. You start to blame yourself. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. You know, um, you could have done better. You should have, you know, not, you know, not taken on as much work or you should have asked for less and you should have, you know, gotten up early. You should have been there earlier. You should have sucked up to your manager or your boss more. All, all of these things, you start to really blame and shame yourself that you don't feel good enough. You don't feel worthy. It really impacts how you view yourself. This Now, now you're not just viewing yourself at work, you're starting to implement this blame and the shame into, you know, other areas of your life. You start to think about your family and you go into, you go into victim, you start to blame and shame yourself. So the, vic the victim will start to call their friends and complain about how they got fired. And they're going to talk to their family. They're going to complain about how they got fired. They might even go in to start blaming their boss for being a dick or for not giving them the right opportunities. They might start blaming their families they might start blaming their you know some kind of other ailment inside of their you know their wellness they might begin to start blaming um anything and anyone other than themselves they are not quite looking to take responsibility so one aspect of the victim is blaming others and the other aspect of the victim is actually you know blaming the self right mm. now this is a person who, after a couple of weeks, instead of going out and using their energy to focus on finding a job, is actually going to spend more time sulking, complaining, maybe getting depressed, and you know, putting maybe their family in a lot of stress. Because instead of actually getting back out into the world and finding a job, they're complaining, they're blaming, they're shaming themselves. And then they might get stuck in a pattern of, the fact that they haven't found another job, blaming and shaming themselves for doing that, but they're not actually taking you know, action to go out and, and do this. This is where people get really stuck in any pattern of the victim because then you're not taking action and then you've already been playing victim and then you, you start to stack these victim codes or these victim 
you know, mindsets on top of one of the one another, right? On top of on top of each other. So I think you guys get the point. I'm going to switch over to the victor. Now the victor goes through the same scenario. He gets fired. He gets let go. He processes the fear, the abandonment, the sadness, those emotions. Those are normal. But as he's going through that process, and whether this takes him hours or a couple of days or a week, whatever it may be, he realizes that that job really wasn't the job for him. He realizes that, you know what? The truth was that he should have actually left that job maybe a while ago, that, that there's a better, greater opportunity for him. And that this is actually a course correction, a realignment on his life's mission, on his purpose, on his path. That is helping course correct him into a new direction, into a whole new process. When the victor speaks to his family, he says, you know what? I could have shown up better at that job and I didn't, but this is now showing me, you know, where I want to go. I'm, I'm available for this to be a growth opportunity. I'm available to view this as a change that needs to be made in my life. And I would say God's source universe, you know, gave your boss or your old job that nudge because you didn't have, you know, the cojones, the balls, the courage to end that job when you knew you should have, when you knew you weren't giving it your all, when you knew you weren't showing up fully, that you could, of course, correct it. And the victor doesn't call his friends to complain. The victor says, hey, man, I've been let go. I'm curious if you have any opportunities. Or, hey, I'd love for you to reflect back to me some of the things that you think that I'm really good at because I'm really looking to cultivate my next phase of my career. And, and starts to explore how they could take responsibility for why they were fired and they immediately start taking responsibility for what their next step is going to look like now this doesn't have to be um right away but this is the process that is happening because they know they've been let go for a reason and they know whatever is coming next is going to be even more beneficial to their evolution and to ultimately unleashing their highest potential mm. Yeah, I love that. And and I just really want to highlight, it sounds like the, the biggest difference to me is the victim blames and the victor takes radical self-responsibility. Yes. You know, if we just kind of boil it down to to one thing each. Um, so so we've just got, you know, a few more minutes. Um, I want you to talk just a little bit more about the victor and you know, because again, we're we're in day three, and and assuming, um, you know, people have now gone through the the process, they've opened up to this idea that things can change and they can become the creator of of their life, and then they've you know really started to implement all the tools so that they're optimizing, you know, how they're thinking, how they're feeling, how they're showing up in their lives, and they're bringing that peak performance into every area, and now you know we're talking about that embodiment. And how being the victor really leads to true freedom, freedom and fulfillment on every level. So I wonder if you can speak a little bit more to that and, and, and you know, what does it look like to be the victor when you've implemented all of these things and you're able to show up fully in your life, um, you know, and, and what does maybe even freedom and fulfillment look like to the victor? Yeah, and, and I might just rephrase, instead of looking at it, to me, it's more of a feeling. Like, what does that feel like inside of my body and inside of my being? Um, because, you know, our eyes and, and the looks can be so, so deceiving. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and, and the, the victor mindset is like an ongoing process, right? Like, I catch myself when something happens that I want to like, it's very common for like default to be like the blame, you know? And I'll, I'll use an example that's live right now so i'm sitting here the ocean's in front of me and there's you know some kids kayaking out front right i can hear them maybe you guys can't so i could blame the kids for making noise right i could um i also as the victor have full and this is very basic but have full ability to get up off this chair and go move somewhere where they might not be right as an example so it's it's starting to notice how you are processing and analyzing moments. And instead of pushing blame and saying, 
well, they shouldn't be here right now, or why are they being so loud, or some of these things that might go through the mind, it's saying, hey, wow, like that's so beautiful that these kids are enjoying this sunny day kayaking on the ocean. I'm empowered even during this call to get up and move if I needed to, or if it was negatively impacting the quality of this. And I did do a sound check with, with Lee before to, to make sure it wasn't. So these are just some of the micro moments. Now, when I, as the victor, what I feel, I feel very empowered to make the changes that I need to. Now, when you're the victim, you build up resentment and that that's harbored, that's stored, especially when we are in relationships in business or in intimate relationships with partners. You know, when we are disempowering ourselves by being the victim in the relationship instead of the victor, the victor learns how to communicate its needs with kindness and with love. It learns how to make changes that it needs to for itself instead of continuing to self-sacrifice because the victor feels fulfilled. It has energy that's moving through us because anytime we sacrifice our truest nature, we are cutting off a piece of our energy that's flowing through us. If our, our, if our energy is like a balloon, every time that we self-sacrifice, we pop a little hole in that balloon. So the victor feels full. The victor feels empowered. The victor knows, and, and the victor is not, I want to make a distinction. This isn't like, you know, warrior and we're victorious over this you know civilization or this you know in this war or battle or things like that this is just a, a you versus a you thing this has nothing to do with anyone else because the victor is about radical responsibility and what i encourage is, is starting to notice when things are happening in your life how are you perceiving it are you looking at it as an opportunity to grow and to expand because when you're fully in the victim even though you'll falter when you do, when you do catch yourself blaming or shaming yourself for someone else, the victor doesn't repeat that cycle and continue to perpetuate it into density or negativity. It says, holy shit, I still got work to do. Wow, okay, maybe I need to say sorry either to myself or to someone else, take responsibility. Hey, you know what? I just realized that like I blamed you for that and that was really on me. I, I could have moved. I could have you know, switched up my environment or in a relationship, you know, I just want to take responsibility that like, I could have shown up better. And I did it. That's okay. We're moving forward. But mm -hmm. let's move forward internally. And so it's really about that radical responsibility. And being able to hold yourself accountable to that radical responsibility is again, like a moment by moment, day to day, week by week, month to month decision that you make so that you're constantly evaluating how you are showing up because it can be easy to slip into these stories of blame and easy to slip into these stories of victor or victim but if you truly want i believe at least if you truly want to cultivate who you are in this lifetime whether it's as an entrepreneur working for an organization whatever it may be it all are fantastic and and perfectly designed for you just make sure that you're doing it with victory in mind that you are beginning to feel fulfilled and you are not making excuses for why you can't do what you want to do mm. beautifully said man and and and, and again I'll, I'll just kind of reiterate for everyone watching that you know as the victor takes radical self-responsibility you can change up your environment you can change up how you show up in your life and to me, that's what leads to true freedom, because then you're not bound mm -hmm. by, you know, the restraints of the outside world or what other people are doing. It's like, oh, I'm I'm responsible for for my environment right now. I'm responsible for me. They were here doing, doing their thing. And, you know, um, if it's too noisy, I'm going to, as you said, pick up and pick up and move. So so it's it's really, really important to be able to take that level of, of responsibility in how we show up in our lives. And then to, you know, lovingly and nobly and authentically hold each other accountable when at times, you know, we, we are maybe over overstepping our boundaries with each other. Um, so I, I love I love this conversation. We could continue, you know, probably for another 20 minutes, but I, I know we both have um, appointments coming up. I just want to leave off with I want to ask you, what does peak performance mean to you, Jeremy? Hmm. 
peak performance to me is the merging of the body, the mind, and the spirit working in optimal synergy to do and be whatever is needed in that moment, whether it's a business endeavor, a creative project, uh, a, you know, a dynamic in a relationship and or running up the side of a fucking mountain. It is the synergy of having all of those pieces working as optimal as possible, working together to optimize the fulfillment, the enjoyment, and the potential of life. Mm -hmm. Mic drop, beautifully said. Um, anything else you wanna leave our viewers with? Any other words of wisdom? Man, I'm just gonna keep going in on the same path. Life is happening for you. For you, every single thing is happening for you. It's not happening to you. And if you can repeat this as things happen throughout your day, as things happen throughout your weeks and your months, eventually this mantra will begin to anchor itself in your biology, in your physiology. And I believe there will be a remembering inside of you that you are the victor and not the victim. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Jeremy, how can people uh, get a hold of you, some of the businesses that you're operating? Um, yeah, how can, how can we connect? Yeah, best would just be through my socials, Jeremy J. Hoffman. Um, there's two F's and two N's in Hoffman. So if you, and there is a J between, so it's Jeremy J Hoffman .com, on Instagram, uh, on threads, everywhere you want to go. And then from there, you know, there's the projects, some of the projects listed, as well as a newsletter that will be going out, updating a lot of the different things that we're cultivating in the world right now. Amazing, man. Thank you so much again for, for your time, for your presence, for your energy, for everything you're up to in the world. Uh, as always, it's, it's uh, an honor for me to, to be able to connect with you and, and share just a little bit about what you're up to. Yeah. Thank you, man. Lee, love you. Thank you for creating you too, the space man. for this to, to share. Peace. Bye, bro.